Hi, and welcome to our weekly communion, staying connected in a changed and ever-changing world. Last Thursday, we met together for a time of prayer for those caught up in the war and in much suffering in Ukraine and throughout Eastern Europe. Living in a globalized world, we receive so much information from around the world through advanced technology. Not only do we hear what's happening, but we mostly hear uh, opinions, right? We hear polarized opinions and why it's happening. A lot of this is driven politically, but we also hear a lot of evolving philosophy and differing worldviews along with these opinions. Question, as a Christian, are you prepared for all this information? Are you able to listen to the news without getting caught up in the emotion of the moment, whether that be anger or fear or a utopian blissful hope in humanity? As a friend of mine once said, don't let people pay to make you angry get you angry. I've discovered in my 45 years of walking with Jesus and studying his word, the more I understand the basic principles of a biblical worldview, the less I react emotionally to the opinions I hear in the news. I'm free from anger, fear, anxiety, or even false hope and the disappointment that comes from it. I'm free to take affirmative action that leads to serving others, offering real help especially when people need it. Question, what are the important elements of any worldview? Well, I'd like to suggest four basic elements of a worldview. A worldview must answer the following. What is the nature of the world we live in, Earth and our universe? What is the nature of humanity, our beginning, our purpose, and our end? What is the nature of our problems? And what is the nature of the solutions to man's problems? Well, several weeks ago, I began sharing with you seven biblical principles that answer these questions. Now, let me be clear. What I'm sharing with you in these few moments over the next couple of weeks is not a complete biblical theology or doctrinal statement. No, I am sharing with you seven biblical principles that will help you thrive emotionally, spiritually, and physical in our globalized, changed, and ever-changing world. Well, here are seven biblical principles that will help you to assimilate the information you receive and keep you living, working, and ministering well. Number one, principle of sovereignty. Number two, principle of self-governance or self-control. Number three, principle of stewardship. Number four, principle of sowing and harvesting. Number five, principle of individuality. Six, principle of character. And seven, principle of unity or interdependence. Each of these are worthy of their own study. So I will take a brief look at each biblical principle over these next uh, several weeks. My hope is that your life will reflect these biblical principles, helping you to live well while being an example for others who are desperate for a sense of truth and direction, a worldview that is both coherent within itself and congruent with what we see happening in our world. The first biblical principle is the principle of sovereignty. Now, I've shared this with you a couple of weeks ago, and you can find my initial teaching on sovereignty on YouTube at Union Church Rio. Go to videos, and there you can look up Matthew 6. But I will take a moment here to do a little review. According to the dictionary, sovereignty means supreme power or moral authority, sovereign governance or rule. John Piper says God's sovereignty is his right and his power to do all that he decides to do. In fact, in Job 42, 2, it says, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Well, this principle teaches us that God is Lord over all things. He is supreme ruler of the universe. 
He is the creator and sustainer of all things. God made the sky, the stars, the sun, nature, and everything that exists for us to admire his marvels and to know his power. Not convinced? Not sure? Well, let's take a look at what the good book says. I want to read from you for you from Colossians 1.16. Listen to this. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. Now in this verse we see sovereignty defined. God's right and power as creator over all other authorities, visible or invisible. Here's the point. God is sovereign. Man is not. God is in charge and we are not. Listen to James 4, 14 and 15. <clears throat> Why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You're a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. I was reminded of my mere mortality this morning as I lay in bed. It must have been 3 a.m. It was very dark. First, I heard rain spattering on the windowsill. Uh, the sound got louder and then louder, and soon thunder rolled in. The sound was so heavy that it seemed to shake the building. Uh, I sensed this kind of cold, this fear in, the, in my inner core. You know, I even grabbed the, the covers and, and did one of those little uh, <coughs> uh, curled up, you know, like in a little, little ball. Psalm 97 describes the Lord as the one who reigns or rules. It says he is, or clouds and thick darkness surround him. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. His lightning lights up the world and the earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. Psalm 2 says this, <clears throat> Why do the nations conspire and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord. The one enthroned in heaven laughs, and the Lord scoffs at them. He rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath. Question, are you overwhelmed by the news of natural disasters, mudslides, earthquakes, and the like? Do you quake in fear at the thunder? How have you reacted to the news of war or to the rumors of world leaders possibly escalating the fight by using weapons of mass destruction? Now, these are real threats. But remember, God is sovereign. God is in charge. The sovereign principle teaches us to fear God and not man or any other force that can threaten our lives. Now, I told you about the storm this morning. Later, the sun came up. The violence of that storm had passed, and there was a quiet and calm uh, surrounded by this red glow that, that overshadowed the mountains. It was peaceful and beautiful. Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Sovereignty speaks to the Lord's power, and providence speaks to His eternal and loving purposes. Next week, we'll take a look at the biblical reality of providence and how that relates to sovereignty. 
And you will see that in light of God's providence, his sovereignty is not turbulent and unpredictable like some random storm of anger to be feared, but is exercised with extreme patience, justice, and righteousness and brings an eternal beauty and peace to life, even in the midst of the storm. Would you pray with me? Lord, when we consider all of the uncertainty, all that looms around us, seemingly like uh, thunder and lightning in a storm, uh, seemingly like uh, mountains that are coming down and the earth that quakes, or uh, the uncertainty in war and the fear of driving people's outs. Lord, we're caught up by all these circumstances. But help us to see a biblical principle and a biblical worldview that starts with your sovereignty. You are in charge, charge. And even we know, O oh Lord, that these um, events, these events, they bow down before you. We don't know how they all work in your will, but we know that you will bring these things to an end. You will bring, like the morning after, a new dawn. Help us to trust in you with our very lives, O oh Lord, knowing that sovereignty and your providence have eternal purpose. Thank you, O oh Lord, for being in charge. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me for our weekly communion. I would also like to invite you to join me Sunday morning at 10 a.m. here at the Union Church of Rio de Janeiro for our weekly worship service. Stay well, friends. Stay connected in a changed and ever-changing world.